so my job, I'll stall a minute as folks are filtering in. Um, so my job, obviously, um, I think I think Dana and Wolfgang, as they always do, seeing the Alice Trope 101 so many times, gave you a really good overview of of uh, essentially the components and the the, the, the concepts behind um, what we're doing. My job is going to be to take it to a little bit more of a level of specificity um, with an example. Um, we referred to L LCUV, so spoiler alert, that's going to be the, the example. Um, but also, I'm going to give you a high level um, look at the process that um, we did not have, certainly when we started. Um, we'll put some commentary on that. But essentially, the process that has evolved during the course of our first execution of the MVP, or minimum viable product, the first, our first example. Um, the process that's evolved, and a process that I think um, is also replicable and can be applied to other techniques, which we'll be looking at next year. So hopefully this works. Awesome. Okay. Great. So again, we've, we've spoken about the roadmap. I will not review it again other than to say, um, which one is the pointer? I guess. No? Okay. I give up. Um, we are here in the end of the third quarter. We are releasing the, the AFO product. We have a, a, a fourth quarter release um, of the first example of a data model. Um, and as the, as the foundation was uh, delivering on the first product, the actual class libraries, the software that allows you to write to this container that was described for you, um, we needed an example to, to actually help us work through some of the technology pieces that we needed here. Um, and some of the specific details and workflows. So the inspiration um, came from, uh, one of the inspirations anyway, came from um, a screening project, and I'll introduce the term, as, as was mentioned before, integration project. Here's an example of one. We will not be talking about it during the poster session, to, um, sorry, the uh, podium session today, but there is a poster on this, so you can get all the details. But this is a project that, um, I guess it's about a year and a half ago now, or maybe two years ago, that was uh, conceived at Merck um, to look at some co components. I'll go through them quickly and, and tie it into the LCUV MVP for you. So I wish I had a pointer. Um, doesn't work. It's uh, this one. There you go. Oh, there I do. Now I do. Awesome. Okay. So the whole idea of the project, uh, for those who we'll bring it, you know, my background is certainly is chemistry, so we'll bring it to the laboratory for folks to hopefully make this a little more real. Um, typical screening workflow. You have a, um, in this case, it's a chiral screen. You design some experiments. You execute them in your, in your uh, systems, collect the data in your CDS. And then you just have this iterative process deciding, have I gotten to my endpoint? Whatever it is. If not, continue experiments until you get to, get, get to where you need to be. Along the way, the design of this integration project was one, some, one of the earlier examples in the foundation to try to convert files. Uh, we did this in partnership with Agilent and Waters um, and their ChemStation and MassLink software to create the, some of the first examples of ADF files. Little did we know what we were getting into when we decided to do that. Um, and then the general design of this is, is an end-to-end -end workflow. Once one has done the experimental work, is to take the data that you've created in these ADF files put it in a store. We happened to use OpenLab, um, which was uh, uh, the um, repository um, that we were using here on site. Use that as our example. Parsed out some critical metadata from this with help from um, OSPIS and uh, ACD to, to ultimately put reports back into our electronic notebook or to take the metadata that was available during the course of the experiment and augment it with additional metadata, such as chemical structure, that was available during the course of the experiment. Because if you remember the general measurement paradigm that Dana set up for you, metadata is generated all throughout the experiment, but it's not all there incident at the beginning. So again, hopefully this kind of workflow looks familiar to all the scientists. You know what you know at the beginning, you learn things along the way, but you want to document it all and have it all end up in your final places. Okay, so in doing this, um, creating these ADF files, um, we, we looked at it as, as a foundation, as an opportunity to elevate this um, com one company multi-vendor integration project really to a community effort. And, um, and really that was the impetus to start the LCUV uh, working group that Dana mentioned. And really what that means in practical terms is it took 
the SME input from Merck and multiply it by SMEs from all other companies, but also opened it up to other um, vendors who didn't happen to be in the initial Merck integration project of LCUV so that they could also offer their input into it. The goal of all this um, is to essentially create a single set of ontologies and data models for LCUV that covers all vendors in the space, not a single vendor. Okay. So I wish, especially um, the, the lead on this project, unfortunately, Wes Schaefer, many of you in the audience know him, uh, couldn't be here today. So I wish poor Wes had this process when I started. Um, we did it a much different way, but I'm gonna use revisionist history and I'll tell you how it turned out. Okay. And then we'll work backwards. So first I'll give you an overview of the process um, and then I'll break down the parts for you. Um, but again, this process is important because it, I think it's a replicable one. Okay, so one of the main goals of this process, and I, I keep getting um, flack on the cartoons, but I'm leaving them in, um, is to link the, the, the scientists with our IT professional um, and, to in, and, and enable them to talk the same language in doing this, because this really does span both, both disciplines. So where we begin, again, on the laboratory side, the what I'll call the human readable side, is figuring out what you want to do. So um, we started talking about LTUV, and that's a lot. And when you think about not only all the metadata and, and applications of LCUV, but we also think about the, um, the adjacent workflows that feed into and, and can, be, um, can be fed from the LCUV experiment. Wow, that's big. So we'll talk um, in, in the subsequent slides about the use case that narrowed the scope of it. Um, but another important concept I want to introduce now, is, along with the use case, is, all, is something called the competency question. So in layman's terms, that's beginning human readable and we will eventually make it machine readable. That's essentially the query that one would want to run in the end of, of the data to extract the, the knowledge or the value from it. So I'll show you some specific examples of it. But with a combination of use tests and queries, we had set up, you know, in the document world, what we endeavored to do. So through this iterative process, and it, and it truly is iterative, um, the use case and the competency questions help define um, the taxonomies and ontologies that would be necessary to, to actually deliver on those questions. So essentially, first pass, think of it as all the words in the questions have to link back to the taxonomies and ontologies so that we can actually execute a query and, and expect to get a, um, a result. Um, once, these, uh, once this input had informed the taxonomies and ontologies that we needed for the use case, that allowed us to build a data model, and I'll show you the tool that we used to do that. And that data model, again, it's, uh, the, the initial tool will be more in the scientist world needs to be translated into the IT world, and we'll show you at a very high level how we do that um, to allow us ultimately to have a system that, that brings the, the um, human-readable world into the machine-readable world, but also gives us the ability to validate through the power of computers. Okay, and the, the general thesis here is once we've done this, enough iterations that we get the endpoint that's desired, we can use the ADF software libraries that have been developed to populate the HDF5 container that Wolfgang described. So that's what we're trying to do. <clears throat> so again, bringing it back a little bit to the laboratory, so what was the LCUV uh, use case? So we, we came up with these, these three bullets that were sort of the pillars that oriented us. Um, first um, is to, to essentially have enough detail written into the ADF that it would, would support our GXP applications. Okay, that's pretty broad. Um, but think of this as mostly the inputs and outputs of the instrument experiment. Um, second, um, around specifically around the details of the method, um, obviously in a GXP environment, you may not provide every detail of a, me of, of a, um, of a method in a, in a regulatory dossier or in, in other um, GMP documentation, but there is, a, there is a level of information that's needed really for the scientist to allow um, reproducibility of the data to, for, for another scientist to set it up and run the same um, this equivalent experiment. We also wanted to make sure we had that checkpoint um, met. So meeting the regulatory burden of, of completeness, but also the scientist's practical burden. And then finally, um, all this needed to be um, presented in a, in a standardized structured format. So here are examples, this is not the entire list, but examples of, of some of the company, competency questions that the team came up with. And again, I think the important thing here, um, just to, to build off of some of the concepts that Wolfgang and and Dana presented to you, 
um, are the, the, that these questions, and again, I'll just allow you to read through them while I'm speaking. Um, again, hopefully, to anyone who's worked with HPLC, those are the kind of things you would want to ask when you were searching, searching your metadata. But you also can see that some of them um, can start getting a little more involved, and they're really joining a lot of more complex um, thoughts, thoughts or concepts together. That if we if we didn't go through the trouble of building an ontology, and I'll show you in the next couple of slides a little bit of a, of a specific example of what that looks like, you know, largely what we would probably be able to do is what we can, most of us can do in our systems now, and that's search for a word. You can search for the word chiral and get hits for things that have a chiral in it, but you can't really construct a sentence. Okay. So, in the human readable world, we put together our best wish list. Um, the, the list was much longer, and then as we talked to the technical experts and understood the impact of it, we added the list. And we cut it down to a more manageable size. So again, um, going through, if you can sort of, in your mind, think back to the cartoon, with this use case, so scope, competency questions, what would our desired output look like, we endeavored to build the necessary taxonomies. Here's an example of different separation methods. Here's different attributes you might uh, record for a result. We built the taxonomies um, with these parent-child relationships to basically create that backbone of the LCEV ontology that, that was, um, again, I want to stress this point, was, wasn't um, only critical for the particular vendors that Merck had started the integration project with, but with crowdsourcing from all uh, the many vendors that participated that really would cover um, the ontologies that would be uh, the core of, of what was necessary for all LCEV vendors. Okay. Um, next was building the link between those taxonomies, that backbone of terminology and definitions um, and, and hierarchy to the actual ontologies. And I think the simplest way to think about it, um, since this probably is an introduction for many, is if you, we've, we've broken up an example here around um, instrument methods um, and some of the materials and processes that are in them, um, broken them up and color coded them, where the red items are materials, uh, purple are processes that are involved, blue are the equipment are, that are involved, and green are the roles and functions. Just again, um, to, to build on this point, um, I, think, I think Wolfgang used this example, um, I was wrong too when we started. To me, a material was, um, yeah, a, a sample was a, was a material. Uh, no, <laughs> it's a role. Um, material is the physical entity, and in one workflow, it may have a role as a sample, another it may be a standard, another it may be a, et cetera, et cetera. So the power of the ontology also allows you to set up many roles. Um, so, you, so hopefully, even just from the visual, you can begin to see this interconnectivity of processes and relationships between these items that you can create as the backbone of all that you do by building an ontology, as opposed to some of those um, examples of, of very simple trees of parent-child relationships that really only support drop-down menus and things of that sort, single entity, ter uh, single search terms, such as that. Okay, so this effort here um, is, was, was, a, was a very large involved effort we're going to use this slide again. The visual, I think, um, is, is powerful. This is, a, this is an example. Um, as the team, again, remembering the process, we had our use case, we had our questions now, we built the taxonomies and ontologies, but we still needed to figure out, well, but how does someone actually use that in, in an HDF5 container in an LCUV real, um, experiment? So we needed some sort of visualization technique to allow the scientists me first, I was screaming for this, to actually take some of these ontological concepts and, and conceptualize what in the world it, it actually meant. And so um, one, of our, um, one of our partners um, highlighted that there was a really a useful um, public tool called Concept Maps or CMAPs um, that, we, that we've, we have since adopted that allows one to take those ontologies and, and map out how the structure of the data that we actually will use, in this case, for LCEV. This is a, believe it or not, this is a collapsed view. It is much, much more com uh, complex than this. But that's because it's got all that, that deep, deep semantic meaning um, built in behind it. Um, the other important, um, ne next, next important step in, in the process was to take these, these visual concepts and now turn them into something machine readable. Okay. All right. So, so here is 
I'm going to get a very high level. I am not an IT person, so I, I will do a very, very high level uh, treatment of this. So this is a blow up of one little bitty piece of that, of that data model. So around an injection. And so you can see that you have an injection process. There's, there's set up parameters here um, in this particular case, uh, where it's injection speed um, and injection volume, um, which involves certain, certain pieces of instrumentation and other standardized sources of, of units. And through the magic of IT, which is where, um, where which are our friends at, at Oscus get, um, have helped us, we can run, um, we can create computer readable queries that allow us to query our data and actually find the values that we're looking for. So it's a, it's a cross check. How the team actually operates um, is through a very, very active uh, blog. These, uh, if they gave up frequent flyer miles for blogging, um, this gentleman here would win. Um, it, but it's, it's a very, very, it's an, it's an awesome team, basically uh, crowdsourcing ideas, using posts to, to exchange across all the various companies, ideas until consensus is reached, and then the decision is made. So um, you will see on the, um, the Allotrope tools, lots and lots of these iterative blogs in the LCUV space that have allowed the team to make the, the critical decisions that were necessary. So through these components, again, very quickly, figuring out what, want, what, one, what one wants to do in the laboratory, coming up with a cyclical process that goes around as many times as it needs to, to define the scope of the taxonomies and ontologies needed that allow you to build a data model and then reduce it to um, something that a computer can use to, to actually check the validity of both the ontologies and the data model. Um, th this is what the team has, has essentially done. So what, what does this really help us do? So, so the last component, by, um, by taking the human readable world to the machine readable world, we have automated ways um, with some basic tooling that's in place now and, and will we'll continue to evolve over the next year to check not only the semantic consistency of the ontologies that we've built for LCEV, um, but also verify that the, comp the competency questions against actual instantiated real, real values um, of data. Um, and this, the, the ultimate goal of all this is to provide these finalized ontologies at the end of the year for this first iteration of the use case and the data shapes to our vendor community so that they um, can continue building uh, ADF converters, so engines within their products that allow them to take their current output and convert it into, um, into our common, common format using the common data model, so structure and, and the terminology, just the common vocabularies. And several of our vendors are, are fairly far along in, in this process. Oh, didn't know I had another slide, sorry. <laughs> so, so next steps. So I think this is another important concept that was introduced in the introductions that um, the design of this, not only vendor neutral, but is also is the design is to be extensible. So now that we, um, through a lot of effort this year, have built a lot of the tooling um, and the ontological concepts and the data models necessary to cover LCEV. Um, the, the LCEV group um, has more work as a reward for their success. They're being, they're being broadened out into the chromatography working group because extending the existing scope of the model of LCEV to cover calibrated results, that was just a, um, a scoping decision in the first iteration to exclude, but those will be added early next year into the LCUV model. Um, but also to look at some of these adjacent chromatographies who, because the data model that's created for LCEV with relatively minor modifications um, should, be, should be directly applicable to uh, these other adjacent chromatographies. So there's definitely um, the ability to, to fairly rapidly move through the, the chromatography space and, and create the necessary models for vendors to create converters for all these instrument types. And as it says at the bottom, with all of our teams, um, again, we, we succeed when we get more and more diverse input. So experts welcome. Subject matter experts in, in the science and the laboratory and uh, tech experts um, who either have certain skills that, that may map here or would like to learn some. And again, as, as iterated before, um, this uh, place where we are right here with the modeling of the chromatography data, data system. Really, our goal with this example and all the examples I think you'll see that follow are really to create, I, I like to think of it as a link in the chain um, for this entire value chain of plugging in the LCUV data into 
the semantic web. So we're just creating that link in the chain and we don't want to break it anyway. 